All right, hello. I have a court case for everyone. That's pretty cool and pretty fun. Okay, uh, Harper and Rowe Publishers Incorporated versus National Enterprises, 1985. So there you go. Uh, in 1977, former President Gerald Ford contracted with Harper and Rowe Publishers Incorporated to publish his memoirs. Harper and Rowe negotiated a pre-publication agreement with Time Magazine for the right to, to excerpt, excerpt 7,500 words from Ford's account of his pardon of former President Richard Nixon, also known as the Corrupt Bargain. I got into an argument once about that. Uh, no, the, the Corrupt Bargain's not that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, typically speaking, the Corrupt Bargain refers to three events in, in American history. It refers to the uh, uh, John Quincy Adams, uh, refers to... Ulysses S. Grant, and uh, and this, obviously. I think, yeah, I think it's Grant. Anyways, um, so yeah. Uh, before Time released its article, however, an unauthorized source provided the Nation, the Nation magazine with the unpublished Ford manuscript, probably through some distribution stuff, you know, whatever, right? Um, so there you go. Harper and Rowe sued the Nation newspaper um, alleging that the violation of their Copyright Provisions Act of 1976, the district court held that the nation's use of the copyrighted material constituted a infringement. In reversing the Court of Appeals, held that the nation's use of copyright material was sanctioned as fair use. So there you go. Um, so the question was, did the Copyright Revision Act of 1976 Fair Use Doctrine sanction the nation's unauthorized use of quotations from former President Gerald Ford unpublished manuscript? So this, this is ultimate, uh, what is it, what's the, what's the date on this? Uh, November 6th, 1984. So this is ultimately about like, you know, copyright law um, and, you know, trademarks. So essentially, all you need to know is that Gerald Ford gave the rights to uh, Harper and Vereau, okay? Harper and Rowe agreed to share some of the stuff with uh, with Time Magazine, and then a third source leaked it to The Nation Magazine, okay? And then, uh, yeah, so was that allowed? You know, did they own the copyright, and could that be considered fair use? Um, so in a 6-3 opinion, the court uh, delivered by Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, the court for, uh, ruled in favor of Harper and Rowe Publishers Incorporated. The court held the nation's use of verbatim excerpts from the unpublished manuscript was not fair use. The court reasons that the unpublished nature of a work is key. Although not necessarily determinative, the factors tending to negate a defense or of failure, fair use. Under ordinary circumstances, the author's right to control the first public appearance of his undisseminated expression will outweigh a claim of fair use. Wrote Justice O'Connor. Um, yeah, so William J. Uh, Brennan Jr. and the dissent argued that the court was advancing the protection of the copyrights owner's economic interest through an, unseatingly, through an exceedingly narrow definition of the scope of fair use. Okay, there you go. I don't really understand what he's saying. In his, I don't understand how that's possibly... I, I don't know. I guess he's pro-leaking. I'm not really sure. Um, I mean, honestly, I think this is a pretty simple court case. I mean, someone had the right to use something. Someone distributed it without his right. That seems pretty. No, I, I guess the reasoning is. Mm, I, I mean, I think the, the 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 main the crux of the argument is about whether or not if a third party tells you information, maybe they're committing the crime. But if you then relay that information, are you committing a crime? Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that you would have to be. I mean, maybe not a crime, but you know, you can't release it. Um, you know, right? So. Because then if you couldn't, then you could just say, ah, oh, you know, it was a third party that told me. That that would seem like a way for all sorts of shady stuff to go down. And ultimately speaking, you know, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, not the, I'm not the biggest fan of copyright and stuff, but I think that in this case it's pretty obvious that this was necessary. I mean, if you don't own the copyright to your, you know, to your work, what's the, what's the point of it, you know, at all, right? So maybe, maybe it should expire or whatever. I, you know, I'm, I'm all, I'd love to have a debate with that. But when it comes to this, I think it's pretty obvious that uh, the Harper and Rowe publishers had the right. So they were, I, I think it's a good decision. Um, okay, that's all I got for y'all. Bye.